Hi, welcome, Adele El Gamal with me. You are originally from Egypt, and you are director of the Becquerel Institute, which is a consultancy from Brussels. And you are former general secretary of the European Photovoltaic Industry Association in Brussels as well. I think you took part in a panel discussion just recently on this conference, and the topic was the market situation. So I would like to know from you, how is the challenges of photovoltaic at the moment in Europe? Okay, uh, good afternoon first. Um, yes, definitely, as you know, the situation of PV in Europe is, uh, is a quite difficult uh, situation. Um, I think we've seen a, a reaction of most governments, uh, you know, really wanting to ramp down uh, all the subsidies that were given to, uh, to PV. And uh, definitely we will see Europe probably stagnating for um, probably a couple of years before the market will again grow based on pure competitiveness. I believe that the, the real issue was that um, it has been very difficult um, <clears throat> for the front runners that were the open governments to find the right um, mechanism for uh, policy support uh, in the sense that the technology has evolved extremely quickly. And so in all countries, uh, maybe to the exception up to a certain extent of Germany, there was uh, at a certain moment a, a really, uh, you know, uh, uh, an enormous grow and, and a burst uh, of the market afterwards. So it was definitely not a sustainable growth that we would have liked to see. Now I believe that uh, in the future and because of the uh, increasing competitiveness of PV, uh, we will see now PV again growing in Europe based purely on the competitiveness, the price of the electricity that PV is able to generate. And that will come um, with, I would say, more friendly uh, policies in particular regarding the prosumer, uh, prosumer nature of uh, PV, which is uh, the possibility of distributed generation, consumption and generation at the same point. Well, I think you have seen in uh, all globally a 55 gigawatt uh, peak year in 2015, which was mainly based on China, United States and Japan. What were the drivers in these countries last year? Well, um, I believe uh, each country or region uh, has a different story. Uh, first of all, the, the, uh, we, we believe that the, um, <clears throat> the market last year was a 51 and not 55 gigawatt. Uh, probably this year we will see a market of uh, between 65 to 70 gigawatts, so a huge increase. Uh, I would say, if, if I don't want to detail each of the markets, but we have generally a mix of uh, you know, good policy support, uh, <clears throat> like feed-in tariffs, and um, in, in many cases also a need for electricity. This is uh, definitely the case uh, for China. Uh, in Japan, we have a very specific situation as well uh, with, you know, all the problems that happen with the nuclear. Um, <clears throat> and so the drivers may differ from uh, country to country. I think what's very important to mention is that um, at the moment, we're looking mostly at the, um, the developed economies and the, the developed markets. But there is a, an Im immense potential um, in other countries which uh, do not have already uh, a market for photovoltaic or just an emerging market. And I think, first of all, uh, of uh, you know, developing economies, um, the Sunbelt countries, countries of the Sunbelt, where, just to give you an idea, the growth uh, of the demand, the power demand in those countries will probably equate by 2030 two times the size of the, of the demand, uh, the power demand in Europe today. So there is an incredible growth potential there, where PV has, of course, extremely good credentials due to the uh, high irradiation. Another aspect is, of course, the, um, the uh, developing countries or emerging countries, um, and uh, I think that the PV is a wonderful tool for electrification. Uh, we must not forget that uh, about 1.2 billion people on Earth uh, do not have access to electricity, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, in sub-Saharan uh, Africa, I believe it's uh, about uh, 600 million people having no access. 
So I think that solar home systems were for this group of people always the choice of technology. Now we are talking about mini grids, which are like 50 to 150 kilowatt uh, PV generators. Uh, is this uh, the preferred technology now? You know, it, it's always difficult to say, uh, <clears throat> to make a technology, cho a general technology choice. Uh, but I would say um, to answer uh, to your question, yes, I believe that uh, there is, of course, an interest to look at a system uh, from a system perspective rather than a unique uh, household perspective. And definitely, um, I think it's much more efficient uh, and also easy to operate uh, to have a microgrid which is centrally operated, which is maintained, uh, at, and which can afford uh, also a certain uh, uh, statistical, uh, I would say, uh, balance uh, between the different consumptions. Uh, than, of course, individual system. Uh, one must not forget also that uh, individual system are, of course, the first uh, solution to get uh, at least light into a household. But very quickly, when you talk about, when you um, enable uh, social and economic development, the need for electricity will increase very much, and there you are, obviously, you must speak about a system. How about Europe again? Um, I think tendering is getting more popular among governments as a support scheme than feed-in tariffs. What challenges does this embed uh, for the industry? Well, uh, th that's an interesting question uh, <clears throat> indeed. Um, I think that there are two, two uh, elements in tendering. The first one is uh, <clears throat> when you are um, <clears throat> putting a tender, um, uh, when, sorry, when you're opening a tender, uh, you know exactly the capacity that you're proposing. Uh, so that's a way for the governments to really, uh, you know, <clears throat> measure, control um, the, uh, the growth of uh, PV power into the electricity mix. That's the first element. The second element is that um, although, I mean, there are some drawbacks to the system, which are by the way, well-known in general, this is a way to uh, push prices uh, down. And so, uh, obviously, this is becoming a, a very, very competitive con uh, context for uh, the producers. So, for the industry, this was more the arguments on the side of the governments. For the industry, what are the impacts on this new model? I think the impact is, uh, <clears throat> is that it will put, uh, of course, more pressure on the prices, uh, and uh, definitely it will... Um, in a way, unfortunately, it will uh, favor uh, economies of scale. Uh, so we'll see probably a further uh, concentration, consolidation uh, of the industry. And uh, also it will favor uh, <clears throat> you know, those who are able to um, provide the very low cost of capital. Uh, because, of course, when you, uh, <laughs> when you tender, it's not only the cost of the equipment, it's the cost of the capital, which is extremely important. And so you will uh, privilege uh, very solid and very uh, consolidated and concentrated uh, companies. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice conference. Thank you very much.